Kimberly Fabric, and I am here to discuss medical marijuana. <clears throat> medical marijuana is a strain of marijuana that consists of low THC or tetrahydrocannabinol and is high in CBDs or cannabinoids. Many people know that medical marijuana is used to treat the symptoms of chemotherapy for cancer patients, but many do not know of the other illnesses that the symptoms of chemotherapy also are similar to and can also cure. Today I will be talking about medical marijuana helping with people with anxiety and depression, medical marijuana with children, specifically with epilepsy, and they have many, many seizures in one time or in a short period of time. And I'll be talking about medical marijuana for menstrual pain. So anxiety and depression is one of the most common diagnosed mental illnesses, but also one of the most overlooked. Some of the side effects or the effects that anxiety and depression have on people is that they, it, it decreases appetite, and all, as well as it can cause anxiety attacks and overall stress in everyday life. Medical marijuana, or marijuana in general, has been known to increase appetite and to have a relaxing effect. Thomas Forth of Yale University in New Haven has found that the anti-nausea drug dronanthinol is a component of marijuana which will activate the receptors of CB1 in the brain, which then sends out the coopiomelanocortin neurons in the brain, which will release the the responses to increase appetite. This has been used to help chemotherapy patients and is also has been approved by the FDA because of its effect with chemotherapy patients. The National Institute of Health, NIH, or NIH, in the University of Calgary, or Rockefeller University, has found that medical marijuana releases a chemical that is similar to the part of the brain called endocannabinoid system which relaxes the body and, relax, and regulates anxiety and stress levels. These two things are very common with anxiety and depression, and if medical marijuana helps with other, what helps other illnesses, it can do the same thing with anxiety and depression. Secondly, I will talk about marijuana in children. Now, marijuana research with children is not very high, is not, not very much done because parents are a little bit unwilling to let their children be part of the research study. However, the parents that have had their children go through these studies have had major results. The CNN made, had a documentary on medical marijuana called Weed, and they interviewed two families, one a boy and one a girl, and they had both had Dravet syndrome, which is, where, which is a rare childhood epilepsy. Both children were having seizures very common and very often. Because, and so both of these children were prescribed a liquid, non-psychoactive form of marijuana. It's usually in an oil and it's put on the bottom of their feet and in the gums. They've had miracle, miracle results. The girl was having seizures like every day, every week, and it reduced to three times per month. This is non-psychoactive because CBD is a non is non effective to mind and behavior. There's also other ways that it can help children with with um, ADHD because it calms the body and helps relax them so they won't be so hyper, as well as many other things. And children should be able to relieve their pains. Lastly, I will talk about medical medical marijuana and menstrual pain. Now, this only affects half of the population, and Menstrual pain is something that's not really discussed because the menstrual, like the menstrual cycle, is kind of it has a stigma to it. It's not it's very seen as negative. However, there are companies that are creating products that contain the substance in marijuana that can relax the body. Something called marijuana tampons by Fioria is a oil based cocoa butter distilled THC oil and ingredient called CBD isolate, which is found in organic hemp is put into sort of a tampon and it's inserted into the body and the vaginal walls absorb the medication and it relaxes the muscles and the nerves, uterus, cervix, ovaries and block out all the pain. One of the testimonies they had was a woman was having bloating, bladder pain, just excruciating pain because of her endometriosis, which is a condition where the tissue on the outside of the uterus grows, or on the inside of the uterus grows on the outside of the uterus. 
she swears by this product and by this pain and is one of their most prominent testimonies. Lastly, a more common marijuana, marijuana product is Whoopi Goldberg's marijuana products for menstrual pain. She swears by marijuana for her cramps as she has had menstrual pains for a very long time as well as her grandchildren have had as well. Her products are balms, sipping chocolate, and bath soaps which are infused marijuana and they release the cramps and the pain. All of these products can be bought at distilleries, in like marijuana distilleries, with a marijuana card. However, they are only, can be, right now they're only available mainly in California and some states are trying to improve their products. Today I talked about more ways medical marijuana can help people. And they're very effective in many other ways. Thank you. All right, Kimberly, the uh, subject is clear. The proposition is not quite as clear. At the end, I think you, you kind of tried to recap what that proposition was, and uh, I thought you were coming out a little bit uh, sharper on that, although you bailed out right at the end when you were rushing because of the time issue. Uh, so I, I know generally what your position is, although it's going to be harder to tell based on the secondary claims whether you've met that uh, position. You do signpost the secondary claims pretty clearly. Uh, I know what those issues are. Uh, there is background information that talks about uh, the uh, approved uses of this by the FDA, so that's obviously not going to be controversial because there's not really any dispute about whether or not it works in those contexts. It's the other context that it then becomes important to look at. And uh, you had a little bit of information that I thought came from uh, some legitimate uh, sources and National Institutes of Health and some other people who found research that suggested <coughs> that these uh, CV oils could be useful in <coughs> <coughs> reducing stress levels and uh, managing those sorts of things. I, I don't know how significant that is and one of the things that I think is important to consider is whether or not there are alternatives for most of these things and if there are all, uh, effective alternatives that already exist then I'm not exactly sure why this is a product that is needed or uh, re required and that's why one of the things that I think uh, probably needed to be developed a little bit more. Uh, the argument about uh, the effect on children, particularly uh, the kids that you mentioned with rabbit syndrome, um, and you describe something that sounds like it is being administered under medical conditions. It's a, a, a test or a clinical trial that's going on there. And you, you, what's interesting is you gave us the results for the girl, but I didn't hear what happened with the boy in that particular experiment. And so, uh, you know, Maybe I'm just being overly uh, pessimistic and suggesting, well, that sounds like we had a 50% fail rate and the idea of uh, this oil, this liquid having a, this effect, I don't know, it sounds pretty dramatic and uh, I think you need a little bit more information on that. Again, I assume that there probably was an absence of alternative treatments for these kids in the situation that they had or whatever there was wasn't working very well but I think that that wasn't made as clear as it needed to be. And then the uh, whole issue of menstrual pain, by the way I think you've got a false premise in there. You, you are correct that menstrual pain only affects half the population. Well, 
only half the population has menstrual pain, that doesn't mean that the other half is not affected by the, uh, the, the problems that go along with that. And so I think, uh, I think there's a broader argument to be made there. Uh, the, uh, you know, we're, we're relying a little bit on the testimony of people here, and you know, testimony is a good way of tying something into reality, but it's hard to prove that, and it's one of those things you open up a magazine and there's a weight loss ad and it's here's Bob Smith who lost I lost 350 pounds eating this kind of food that uh, you can order today and I'm going yeah but I think most of us recognize that that's really not a very good argument there and that's kind of what you've got here here's this woman who swears by it and how important it is and I'm not doubting her word on this I'm just saying it's awfully hard to make an inference from that and we don't have a lot of other data to support it I'm glad that Whoopi Goldberg is supplementing her income on The View and other programs and movies that she makes. Uh, but uh, again, the notion that it has any beneficial effect, uh, I don't know that it's been demonstrated here. The existence of the products doesn't necessarily mean that the products do anything. Like the, the existence of my children doesn't necessarily mean they do anything. <laughs>